So what we're going to talk about is the, the you know, we're going to talk about a lot, a lot throughout the day, but for the next 30 minutes, we'll talk about, you know, what is, what does a modern data landscape need to look like and, and why does it, why do we care? Why does it need to be different than it's ever been? And, um, and it's really, you know, it, I feel like over the past 30 years that I've been doing this, I, I routinely, I routinely say, um, we're, we're in a really unique, exciting time of, of the data era because there's so much change. And, uh, and you know, the last, well, the last couple of big changes is when, you know, we evolved from, from normal relational databases to Hadoop and the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, you know, back in like 2009 to 2011, and then moving to the cloud, you know, um, somewhere around 2014. And um, and now you know I think that it's uh, it's been six seven years um, almost eight uh, that we've been on the cloud and we've been using advanced algorithms to handle our data using machine learning getting very comfortable with new environments um, and changing the way we interact with data not enough we'll talk about you know how how I think the future is going to be uh, and, and, and how it already is. Um, but, you know, the biggest change has been lately that, you know, we used to think about data as data folks, as, you know, there's business transactions, and then we get those transactions out of systems, and we do analytics on it to make business decisions. And I think the, the biggest thing that has been progressing over the last 10, 15 years is that the interaction between and the dependencies between business transactions and analytics, where nowadays business transactions can't even occur without data analytics, driving how the user is experiencing that data uh, and your products and the experience and the UX and, and how everything is and how data and analytics and user experience is starting to become one. And, um, and it's incredibly exciting times. And I'm going to touch a bit, I can't ignore, you know, in November of 2021, I can't ignore the fact that Facebook just announced that, you know, they're rebranding and reimagining what Facebook is and, and the, the introduction of the concept of a metaverse. And we'll talk a lot about that today, throughout the day. And, um, and and what it means to us as data people. Um, so, so let's so let's dive into it. I do think that this is a a giant leap in the way we live. Um, it is what I would consider another step. It's so big. It's another step in the industrial revolution. You know, as big as like when water and steam was introduced to manufacturing facilities when electricity was empow was powering like mass production and assembly lines. And then when IT first became part of the manufacturing uh, paradigm and we started being able to program things back in the seventies. I think now, now that we understand how to interact with data that's not structured, how now we know how to you know, use machine learning and AI to interact with data and make it and make it impact how the users experience data. Um, and with the advancement of virtual reality and augmented reality, um, I think it's really like now is the time, like the 2020s are, is gonna be, you know, written down in, in the history books of a giant, giant leap in, in technology and the way it impacts human beings as a whole. So, you know, this is not some kind of blue sky, pie in the sky vision, you know, that this, this guy Joe Caserta had, like, this is already happening, right? This is, um, these are products and experiences that already exist today, right? Today, we can buy glasses that helps us see augmented reality. Um, we can buy things online that don't exist, right? And we actually spend money for things that live only in the virtual world. We can use the virtual world to create things custom specifically for us through an interface, right? That becomes a real tangible thing. 
and and we can actually eat those things, right? It's uh, it's it's really amazing how how quickly we've started progressing through this advancement. Um, and if you think about it, it's not that much of a stretch to start thinking about how the virtual things that we buy, we may want to have them for real, right? Um, you know, those, those gems that we're creating, we may want to sell them to other people, right? We may want to print them on a 3D printer. Um, we may want to send them to a manufacturing plant and actually get a real gem. Um, you know, we may want to, um, you know, take the, you know, create something virtually, have it be real. We may have something real, like it's not that much of a stretch to take the sneakers that we just created, right? And we have on our physical feet and wear them in our online experiences, right? And so the, the, the line between what's real and what's not real is starting already to get blurry. Um, so, so the idea of, of being able to, to create products that never existed before, uh, that you know, some other big company had to create for you, right? And, and be able to create it yourself and actually wear it and then actually use it virtually, um, right? This is already happening, right? Um, the vision is that you will be able to take these things and use them across different virtual experiences and real experiences, right? So if you think about, well, how would, you know, sneakers that I buy on a Nike site find its way over to, you know, a Halo game, right? Uh, or on an avatar, right? How do these systems or these different virtual, virtual realities actually speak to each other? And the reality is we're already connecting all of our online experiences. When we log in through Google or through Facebook or through Apple, um, and there will be more, right? This will become a very, very competitive environment. Um, we are already telling these companies all of the places we go online. And we, right now, we don't really share that much information between those experiences. Yes, you know, if you look at something on Instagram, you may find an ad for it on Facebook, but that's, that's really child's play, right? We're really talking about affecting our experience with product and creating product, allowing users to create products that can travel through virtual worlds and real worlds. So I think that there's, you know, the only way for this to actually work is through advanced data management. Um, you know, without advanced data management, this, you know, you can have the greatest technology and the prettiest robots online, right, in the world, but, but the, but the interactions and the transactions are not going to work unless you have advanced data management. So, um, so I think that there's a tremendous opportunity for anyone in the data world right now um, to be able to help your company advance and start imagining ways of creating revenue that you never made before, right? And I think the chief digital officer and the chief data officer are need to be completely unified because there's so much inter interdependency between the chief data officer and the chief digital officer and vice versa, obviously. Um, so, um, so, you know, so, it, you know, right now, what we can do with these new technologies, if you think about it, like the, the limitation of any product we buy today is the law of physics, right? We can only build things, right, that actually work in, in our hands, right? Once we get into the virtual world and we can actually create things virtually and use them virtually and share them virtually and sell them virtually, now we don't even have to, we can defy the laws of physics. It doesn't matter. We, you know, the, it, the only thing that stops us is our, our imagination, right? And so how do you price things that are created out of, you know, billions of people's imagination. I think a, a, a huge opportunity uh, in our near future is going to be very advanced pricing engines, like really understanding how, how to take things that never existed before 
put a value on it, right? Train the machine to be able to see what is the demand of this thing? Um, what is the cost of this thing? Uh, if there is a cost um, and, and figure out, you know, is, what is its value? Um, and, and, you know, and also considering the people creating these things, you know, what are they willing to pay? You know, I, I believe that, you know, we could probably see in our lifetime that we create cars, right? That we can only drive online. And if you think about it, um, I lived in the suburbs of New York City. Every weekend, I would see guys driving their weekend car. You know, and if it's raining, they don't drive that car. They have this car for posterity, for, for you know, for status. And they drive it, you know, every once in a while. Maybe if it's raining, they don't, right? And they want everybody around them to see that they own this car. If we put a value on a car that lives only in the virtual world and they can drive it around virtually, um, we can probably charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for something that doesn't even exist, right? And, and, put, a, and put a value on it and lock it down so that that object online actually retains its value. It can get stolen, right? And then that piece can disappear. And for another fee, you can buy a replacement. Um, you know, the, 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 the possibilities are endless when the only limitation you have is your imagination. And the only way for all of this to work is to have trusted, fast, uh, credible, quality data um, that can drive these engines, right? That is actually going to generate revenue. Um, you know, the thought of like monetizing data, like it's the opportunities has never been um, more prevalent because all we're really doing is removing data around, right? And, and when we're selling things that don't exist, what are we really selling? We're selling the data that generates these things. Um, so, you know, getting that right um, should be number one priority uh, in, the, in the very, very short term future. So that's, you know, that's a great vision. Um, I do think that 100% of it will come true. Um, the challenge is that today's data um, owners in organizations are focusing on the wrong things, right? They're not focusing on getting the data right, having a solid foundation, having it governed, having it quality assured, like the basics, right? What we're doing instead is we're trying to make it look iteratively prettier, right? Uh, we're coming up with shiny machines for it to actually to, to try to interact with it through advanced business intelligence. I don't think that is what we should be focusing on. That is not going to prepare us for the future, right? That's kind of, it's very, very short-sighted. I think to pre prepare us for the future, we have to think of the ecosystem that we live in and how do we interact with that ecosystem, streaming data, quality assuring data, using that data, leveraging it and monetizing it, right? And think about all of the touch points of that data, what has to be done to it. And, and then, then, you know, we can really focus on now we can start changing the way the world interacts with our data. But unless we get the basics right, it's, it's not going to happen. So, you know, the, the in reality today, even though we have these great advancements on the software development side and the user interaction side, you know, the poor people who are trying to just get data disseminated and democratized throughout an organization are still struggling. You know, we more than had, this is a, you know, a survey that was done by Veritas, but, um, more than half of uh, the data within an organization is still not being used. Um, data, you know, is still being siloed. You know, if you think about how to create products, um, you know, you, you need to have some kind of quality assured inventory before you can have send a product to a to a to a user of that product, right? Anything, a toy, a glass, right? Something like this, we need to make sure that it's not gonna chip in my mouth when I drink the water and the water is not contaminated, right? It's, um, you know, with data, you know, focusing on the shiny stuff around the core platform is not focusing on the right thing. 
and you know integra data integration data quality um is is still to this day like the most important thing you know fundamental data management is still the most important thing as as data people um and also you know the uh, 58 percent um say that complex data footprints limits the ability to use data this is a really important statistic right more than half um you know nearly two-thirds of 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 companies say that yeah we have the data but it's so complicated to get to that data we just we can't use it right so so your new data platform of the future needs to be needs to be you know i don't have my phone handy but it needs to be like apple simple right iphone simple um if you know if you know i i love um you know the the new concept of data mesh um, I do think that, you know, we need to get the whole idea between data mesh is to get data in the hands of users faster, right? The time to market or the time to value a piece of data from the, from, you know, from its origination to putting it in the user's hands is taking way too long. Data mesh is one of the answers. Um, the challenge with data mesh is though, it, it expects everybody to really understand data and really like be an engineer to understand that data. And, um, and it, it, there's just, you know, it needs to get simpler. It needs to get simpler. It's a very, very large investment to do a data mesh project or, or, or to come up with a data mesh uh, conceptual solution in your organization. Um, I think that in the interim, it makes a lot of sense. It is a great way to get towards the end goal, but the end goal needs to dumb it down. And we need to be able to do automation, automation, automation. And you know, I'm going to talk about exactly what that automation looks like, right? Um, uh, and then also the last, the last uh, bullet is, um, you know, seven point five million dollars on average is is what you know we what the average data breach is costing in the U.S. It's a tremendous amount of money that is tremendously skewed. It goes into hundreds of millions. Um, you know, and then there's very small ones. So average numbers tend to like be misleading sometimes. Um, but security is also a very, very big pri a priority. Um, ironically, most data breaches are on on-prem solutions. So the fear of the cloud um, is starting to, you know, it's starting to be recognized that the cloud is actually safer. Um, so, you know, it's more agile, it's easier to integrate. Um, you know, it's, it, it solves a lot of the problems that, you know, of these struggles um, by moving data to the cloud. Infrastructure is constantly evolving because virtual reality is becoming so popular and it will become popular really fast. We are going to see hockey stick growth in corporate virtual reality experiences. So Amazon and Google and Microsoft are all investing in new hardware to to support uh virtual reality right and um and you know to do it internally and on your you know your own infrastructure um doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's going to be advancing over the next couple of years uh and the average company that has a business to run outside of tech outside of infrastructure uh it's going to be very very difficult to keep up So, so what I recommend is like, don't forget the basics, right? It's like, it's very easy to get excited by the shiny stuff, right? But, but, you know, there are very, very basic things that need to be reimagined, right? And, and implemented and executed, right? I see a lot of paralysis um, around data governance. Um, you know, having an actionable, operationalized data governance playbook, right, where you can actually physically control the governance of your data within your platform, depending more on machines and less on people, right, it has to, it has to happen. Um, you know, having a sound technical architecture, reference architecture, um, that is going to support your future. Um, and, and, and stop, you know, holding close all of the tech debt that you have that got you this far 
uh, through into your career because what got you here isn't going to get you there. Uh, so, you know, come to realization that, you know, let go of some of your on-prem solutions, let go of the way you're doing integration, um, even let go of some of the ways, you know, you're, you're building pipelines and, and moving data within the data platform and testing for quality assurance. There's new advanced ways and I'll talk about that in, within three minutes. Um, um, have a roadmap, like figure out how quickly you can transform your business. Um, you know, if it's more than three years, you need to change your strategy. Uh, you should be able to, you should have the vision that you need to become a digital company. I would, I would say that, you know, uh, nearly 100% of organizations need to have a strong digital presence that is enabling things like virtual reality and augmented reality in order to do normal business, right? Over the next couple of years, it's, good. it's not gonna be uh, optional, it's gonna be mandatory. Um, and then have a sound data strategy that takes all of your business applications, all of your data applications, all of your uh, insights and analytics and, and makes it a single holistic ecosystem um, and operating model. Um, and that is, um, that is the foundation. Without these four steps, um, you're just building things that, that, that are gonna collapse. Um, you need to have a strong foundation. So this is, you know, this is what it looks like today, right? It, usually it's on the cloud, you know, we go through and we build our pipelines and construction of the different zones within our, within our landing area. And we present the data, we build dimensional models and we uh, interact with either applications or people. I think that, you know, this is a sound starting point but I do believe every piece of this is going to start changing over the next uh, next very short few years. I think that um, we, you know, DevOps uh, will be part of how we do business in the data world. Um, product driven development, I think, is this is where data mesh comes in. Um, I do think is very very uh, important. Progressive elaboration, so we don't boil the ocean. Uh, before we deliver data, right? We need to come up with use cases, deliver very small slices end to end, and then start expanding that gradually, progressing it and elaborating on it over time is, is, is the way data solutions need to be done. I do think manually going and finding your data, being told that there's a new data set to be had, and then you know, having human beings go look at that data, look at the structures, look, do the profiling, that has to stop. And we need to be able to have auto discovery, metadata scanners, um, be able to connect to any kind of uh, internal or external source, uh, automated profiling, and even automate the way we construct our data quality checks and, and, the, and the actions as a result of those checks. Um, I do believe that we will start using, um, there's already products out there and, and Caserta is building an innovation lab, uh, ways to rethink how we build our data pipelines. Um, you know, if you think about what we do, how we think about data needs to move from point A to point B and all of the integration points, a lot of it is done through physical human eyes, looking at data and then writing physically writing code in order to handle that data. Um, it's a very long, arduous process. Um, looking at data for patterns, discovering those patterns, revealing those patterns, and being able to handle those patterns, that's something that machines are actually really, really good at, right? We're, 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 uh, I think we're on the cusp now where machines will start um, integrating data for us, uh, you know, getting data in uh, that we've never experienced before and figuring out uh, systematically how to integrate it with our internal data, you know, master data management, reference data management, um, aligning siloed data sets and unifying the data. 
that has to we can't, we can't we can't do that manually anymore. It has to be um, automated as much as possible. Even if we can automate fifty percent as an immediate goal um, and cut and you know get to the end result, you know in half the time um, that you know that we need to start doing that. Um, and it looks like I'm I'm running towards the end, but I'm almost done. Um, Alan Clark just joined. Hi, Alan. Um, so also, I think the way we interact with data is going to be through APIs. Um, you know, uh, you know, I think uh, having business intelligence tools, dragging and dropping attributes and figuring out like how to build a report. I think that is, I think paper reports or even digital reports, I think are going to be like seen in the, at the Smithsonian Institute. I think that the way we interact with data will be through uh, natural language processing, chatbots. Uh, most of the BI tools have their own chatbot in, uh, interface even now. Um, and I think that, um, you know, the way we, um, you know, once we can do that, having it integrate with a virtual reality experience and augmented reality experience, that leap is getting smaller and smaller. And, um, and it will become one, um, absolutely, uh, within the next uh, less than three years, I would say. Um, so quickly, um, data adoption, data literacy, getting the entire culture of your organization is, uh, to, to rally around your, your data initiatives, still very important for success. Um, if you build it, they may not come internally, right? So, um, so getting people excited about it, getting people to understand what it means to be truly analytics-driven organization. Um, you know, figuring out where you are and what you need to do to get to everything that I just talked about. Um, you know, the convergence of data and digital, absolutely having data as a service paradigm within your organization is a, is a goal everyone on this call should have. And, um, you know, data engineering, data analytics, data science should all be done on the cloud in my, my opinion right now. And, um, and be able to start creating you know, the integration between virtual world and tangible physical world uh, through, through data. And that's it. Uh, thank you very much. We're in about two minutes over, but uh, good to see you, Alan. If, every, if anybody wants to reach out to me uh, directly, feel free to email me, joe.cassert, very simple. And um, thank you. Enjoy the day. <laughs>